Hello, so today I'm going to be playing through the 17 remaining games here in the Game Boy Competition 2021 and I've been given this scorecard here to mark all of the games by all of these different categories gameplay, technical, originality, graphics and audio. So the 17 games here, so let's get straight in to the first game which is called Corb 75 and I've also got a five minute timer for each game as well. So I'm going to play each game for five minutes to give them a fair impression rather than rushing through this. So let's get started with the first game, Corrib 75. And I'll start the timer once the game's loaded up. And start the timer now. There we go, that should be counting down. And I better just move the microphone just out of the way so the camera can focus. So this game, if I remember right, is a pushing blocks style puzzle game, but it's also got a really interesting story. So I'll let this intro just play through now so you can have a look at what else the developer put together for this one. So it says here, Karen, you're awake. Good. Come to the lab. Now? Yes, now. And if I remember right, if you skip this, it actually uh, cuts out this introduction. Um, and just takes you straight to the title screen. I solved it, you have to see this. Fine. On my way. Corb75 has quit. So this lady must be the, the username Corb75. Her real name is Karen. Just in time, we're about to go live. My virtual world is ready for its first users. I have some VIPs waiting to dial in. I hope you'll join them. Your research was indispensable to my success. Sounds better than late night TV. But what was your breakthrough? Aha, you see, this new world is built around a core AI which makes adjustments to the experience to ensure maximum coherence for each user. The AI's a genius. I'm a genius. But enough chat. Grab a haptic suit and let's go. Okay, let's do this. Booting okay. Calibrating input. Blah, blah, blah. Welcome to the future, Core 75. I think that will be a bit better. I just got to turn it down on there a bit as well. So we've got two options. We've got continue and new game. Let's start a new game here and you can see what the game's like. First of all, I love the fact that this is full eight directions of movement. Behold Karen, my creation. Isn't it amazing? Let's go greet the other guests. Wait, something's not right. Error, error, error. Help me. Oh no. I've been teleported. Please find me. End message. So this is a kind of basic puzzle game where you just have to move these different blocks around. Was there a crash? I was in the lobby but then I got shunted here. I hope Professor D finds the problem. This tech is amazing. So I also know that if you press B you can actually dash from one side of the screen to the other. Just like that. Which makes getting through these levels a little bit faster. And I didn't really get much is corrupted, but you must find a path. Do not delay. So as you can see, there's uh, silhouettes on the floor there that you need to push these boxes into. And then that activates that teleporter at the top. Or activates the arrow, which is what you need to finish the stage. So as you can see, it's a really simple idea, but it's very, very polished, especially considering how um, short amount of time they had to make this. So it is really, really impressive. So, as you can see there, that one stopped the fire. Another human? Phew, I'm totally lost. Did you know there would be lasers? FYI, they hurt. But what's going on? So, again, you just have to line these boxes up. And I've only got one minute left to play this. I didn't want to really go over five minutes because there is a lot to get through and this video will already be about... Ah, I've messed up. You can press select, by the way, to restart. So... Let's um, try and do this properly. I think I'm going to run out of time. But... Ah, I've messed up again. You get the idea anyway. 
So you have to, um... Oh! Damn it, I've messed up. <laughs> okay, my god. I, I did get past this level when I was playing through it. Shoot, what do I need to do? Move this one back. Move them all back. And then... Push that one all the way down to the bottom. Oh! Damn it, I've messed up again. Oh wait, no, it's okay. Push that one over. Right, the time has run out, but I'm going to carry on and see whether I can finish this. Yeah, that's the timer going. I'll start the timer again in a minute. I just want to try and finish this puzzle, so... The next thing to do is get this one to go over there. Yeah, I get it now. Oh, no. Have I pushed that too far? I think I've pushed it too far. No! You saw what I was trying to do. Okay. Well, I'll say that's time up for that game. It is a really good game, though. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. So, for gameplay, I'll give that one a 4. Technical... I might actually give that a 5, because this is a very polished game. There's not actually that many games that you can do full movement in. And the fact that they got really nice animation as well. Originality. It's got an original story, but in terms of gameplay, I might just give that a 3. Graphics are really nice. I'll give it a 4, but leave some room for some better games in the future. Um, as for the graphics, I think the environments look really nice, but maybe the character sprite could do with a bit more detail. Um, it kind of sticks out a bit compared to the background. I don't know whether it's kind of a more cartoony versus a more gritty style. I'll give that a four. And audio, I'll give that a three because the music is a little bit grating and a bit repetitive. So that was the first game. Four, four. Um, originality, graphics, three. So I'd give that a... What does that equal out to? About 3.8. Now let's get on to the second game, which is called Core Machina. And as you can see, I've got all these loaded up onto my EverDrive for the Game Boy. And it's at the bottom here, Game Boy Compo, final round, Core Machina. Let's start this one, and when the game begins, I'll begin the timer. And let's reset. Wait for it to get to the title screen. Cool intro music. Right. Let's go, this is Core Machina version 1.2 demo. The first thing I immediately noticed about this one when I was playing it to um, present my top list was just how atmospheric these graphics look. Jupiter, what in there? What in there? There's no way I left my shop open. I distinctly remember locking it up when I left. Upon further investigation, it seems the lock has not been damaged or forced in any way. Very peculiar. Maybe there's more information about our thief inside. Hmm. It seems like there's no sign of rooting about, which implies they knew exactly what they were looking for. The only thing I have in these piles of gears and bolts of any worth is... Oh no, they took my father's stainless gear shaft, of all the things. I don't know what a ga stainless gear shaft is for. Well, I guess I have no choice but to get to the bottom of this. I'll take a look and see if there's any clues. Press select to activate Jupiter's watch. Okay. In terms of the controls, it is a little slippery. As you can see, if I stop pressing left or right, it does take a second to catch up. I like the spotlight on the floor. It's kind of like she's walking around with a torch or something. And you press up to talk to people. Extra to read all about it. Mysterious agents invade London. Prime Minister in hiding, get your paper here. Madam, you have to pay for the news, you can't just stand there and read it. I hear there's an extravagant bar downtown. I should, vis I should visit it someday, but I would have to get on the monorail and I'm definitely afraid of heights. Oh, 
I like the fact that the cutscenes play out during the game as well. Like it just takes the camera away from the player, which is really good. Hey, wait, thief. Excuse me? How can you accuse me of such a heinous crime? You're holding the only item you stole. My only family heirloom. My father's gear shaft. Give it back right now or I'll drop you where you stand. Look, you don't understand. My name's Alara. I need this item. It may not make sense right now, but I'll give it back when I'm done. Wait, you look familiar. Are you? Hey, there she is. Grab her. Let go of me, you fiend. Ah! Stop or I'll shoot. So, it looks like I've got a gun as well now. Damn it, I can't risk the shot. I'll have to find them, rescue her, and get my gear shaft back. Wait, what's that parchment? You received the parchment. Press start to read it. So it's got a really nice inventory screen as well. You've got an area map on the left, which is really nice. And then on the right, you've got something called parts and scrap, which is, I guess, things that you can pick up during the adventure. And there was a number there as well. We've also got weapons at the bottom. And here's the parchment I just picked up. Hmm, this all looks like gibberish. There's got to be some way to decode the note. Okay. One minute, 31. I think the timer just scrolled down there for some reason. This is a game that I would like to spend a lot more time with, just to figure out what exactly is going on in this story. The dog wags its tail excitedly. Pet it, of course. Good boy. Rough. That's cute. They're trying to get on Can You Pet The Dog's Twitter page. So, okay, now you get to pick a destination. So, where should we try and go? Let's try the outskirts. Or is that where I already was? Train yard. So it does seem like a big open game. Where you can basically explore any of those locations. I love trains. The way they look, the way they smell. These run-down shells of their former glory serve as a momentum for future generations to gaze upon. But is this where I actually need to go? I don't know. I need to find a way to read that parchment somehow. Old conductor. A visitor to my tracks? Oh, to be in a young man's shoes. I can barely hear the train's whistle anymore. It's a faint whisper of an era long since past. May you always see the planet for its potential and not curse it to its current state. Our future is in the hands of people like you. Make it bright and screaming for all to hear. Well, thanks for that insight, but didn't help me read that piece of paper. And that is time up for this game. So, let's see. Oh man, this is going to be a difficult one to judge because I do really like this. Okay, let's let's see. Gameplay, four, technical, again four, originality. I'd say four as well. You don't get many of these kind of... I'm actually tempted to give graphics a five because I do really like this sort of film noir aesthetic. It's really not something you see very often. And audio as well is really impressive, so I might actually give that a 5 as well. That's definitely one of the highest rated ones so far. I'm just going to stop the recording and just check that everything is looking and sounding okay before we carry on. Okay, it all looks and sounds good. I know that the webcam is a little bit slower than my voice. That's because I'm using a really, really cheap webcam HDMI capture thing. So when I move into the new place, I'm definitely going to get a better one of those capture devices. But apart from that, everything else sounded great. So we're here on game number three, which is called Dango Dash. And without further ado, let's get the timer started. Let's go. I remember being really impressed by this one. This one's a, a platformer. Do you want to enable always run? No, let's, let's try running normally. I've also adjusted the brightness on the game capture because I realized in the last game it was a little bit too dark. So you're kind of missing some of the details that I could see on the screen. So hopefully I've fixed all of those issues now and it looks a lot smoother. Let's see what's going on here. So you're playing as this dango blob here. Um, what are you doing in your room all day? I uh, studying? Don't lie to me, I know exactly what you're doing. Nothing, but this stops today. I asked your uncle Kyo to give you a job. Oh no, 
Stop whining. Wash your filthy hands and go. I hope you haven't forgotten where it is. Of course not. Don't get cocky. No go. Uh, okay, thanks, I guess. What are you waiting for? Don't come back empty-handed. I want fresh dumplings for dinner. Sorry, I should go to the dumpling then. Okay. First of all, love the atmosphere of this. Love the music. The dumpling den is over there. It's the only restaurant on this mountain, and all they serve is dumplings. I mean, I love to eat dumplings, but making them? I don't know. I shouldn't let my uncle Kyo wait though. He's just as grumpy as mum, if not more. Press A to jump, press B to run, press up to enter houses, and talk to the villagers. Um, apparently you bounce off everything too. I presume this is made in Game Boy Studio, but they've done a great job of masking it, if it is. And that is, I think, why a lot of the games that were in this list got chosen, is because they've actually put effort into making it stand out. Dango, how's my nephew doing? Don't let your grumpy mother bring you down. She loves you, she just doesn't show it. I love the really simple colour scheme in this as well. I heard you're working for Dad now, please try not to disappoint him. I don't want to have to do it if you get fired. Um, I am working for him. Is that him on the roof? It's a weird perspective where everyone's kind of just behind where you are. Hey, Dumpling Boy, what are you running around here for? Don't you have a place to be? I'm just taking a break from my training. Let's see who's in here. Man, why is every day such a chore? I wake up, play games all day, and go to bed. It's hard work, I tell you. Hard work. Let's go see what this shady guy's up to. My son is 36 now and still hasn't moved out. He keeps telling me about being a vlogger. What the heck is that supposed to mean? <laughs> no idea. Let's see if I can get into that house. The jumping feels nice and responsive. These dumplings, let me tell you, they're great. Every day I come here to order dumplings. I could do this for the rest of my life. Yum. I presume this is where I was supposed to go. Hey, Hong Kong Kyo. There he is. Hong Kong Kyo. You're late. So, what can you do? Uh, maybe I can serve dumplings or clean the tables. Let's try serve dumplings. Wrong! You'd only mess up my restaurant. Deliver these dumplings. Make sure they're still fresh. You got a bag full of fresh dumplings. Okay, so where do I have to go? Oh, you're still here? Here's where you need to go. Now scram and hurry up. There's more work for you. I guess that's my life now. Let us show my uncle what I can do. Let's go. Quest one. Dumpling dash. Okay, now it begins properly. With a minute left. So now it's actually a proper side-scrolling platformer. Where you can actually jump on enemies. You've got a health meter. Wow, that's really cool actually. The way it transitions from that sort of adventure gameplay into the delivery section. Your dumpling deliveries here. Ah, finally, come over please. Let's see. Ah, these dumplings are super fresh. You must be an expert delivery person. Here's your reward. I gave you 10 coins. Thanks so much. This is actually my first delivery, and I think you've found your calling. That means a lot of thanks. Anyway, I have to go. Then send my regards to your uncle. Without him, I wouldn't have, I would have starved here. I will. Bye. And I think that's pretty much all the time we'll have. Let's go back and tell him how I did. Hong Kong Kyo, I'm back. That's good. You can put the money on the table. You put the money on the table. I'll be going then. Thanks for the job. Urgh. Do you think it's that easy? One delivery and you're done? Uh, no, of course not. So what should I do? What do you think? Another delivery. This one's a little tricky. You have to find a tent somewhere in the wild. Right. And that's it for the timer. Hopefully that gave you guys a good idea of what the game's like. Gameplay, I think, is really fun. If a little bit simple and a little bit floaty, so I'll give gameplay a four. Technical? Hmm. Four or five, because if this is made in Game Boy Studio, it's very technically impressive what they've managed to do with it. But I'll give it a four, because it's always room for improvement. Originality? Maybe a f It is original, but it is 
Uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a five because I haven't really seen any games on the Game Boy that are like this, where it's a mix of overhead exploration as well as town building and sort of platforming levels as well. Graphics, I'll give a four. Well, they do look really nice. The and the lack of color is an interesting idea. It's quite quite basic, but I can see where they were going for. And audio, I'll actually give a five because I found some of these some of these tunes, especially the first one, really really. Um, kind of earwormy so another really good score on that one same as Core Machina actually so this is going to be really difficult to pick the best ones I think I can't wait to see what other people are going to come up with now the next one I'll just reset it here the next one is called Dawn Will Come and reset the timer as well Dawn Will Come let's see what this one's all about And I'll wait for it to get to the title screen before we press that. So, five minutes, starting now. Let's begin a new game, normal, the intended way to play, sure. Choose a character to start with. Dakota, boost your own attack by one, great fighter. Randy can use grenades, grenade damage five. Ivor steals two, rations, put at finding food, protect others. Oh my god, there's a lot to choose from. Can use medicine battle, boost your own attack. Sure, I'll just start with the default one. Come on, on your feet again. No use sitting feeling sorry, I've got to plan what I'm going to do. Survive until dawn comes. Do tasks. Guard, search, move, meds. Okay, let's try move. School, dangerous as ever, stopped cafeteria. Library, quiet and full of snacks. Office, sad, but there are forgotten lunches. Warehouse. Scary but full of supplies. Uses two food. Let's travel to the office then. Okay. Shoot. What am I shooting at? I think I'm in a fight. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Did I kill something? The area seems quiet for now. I wish someone else had survived. It went dark and things got crazy. Everyone in the school. Gone. Wish I didn't have to be alone. Uh, okay, now I'm in the office. Do tasks. No tasks are assigned. Proceed. The next day has come, probably. Not really sure what I need to do in this game. Guard, maybe? Rest. Search. Search. Rest. Guard. I'm not sure what that's doing. It's just cycling through. Guard. Search. Meds. No tasks assigned. Move. Let's try going somewhere else then. Let's go to the warehouse. And then... I'm not sure what that is. I presume I beat it? The area seems quiet for now. Food supplies are running low. Do tasks. Uh, cancel. Search, guard, rest. I don't know whether it's broken, but I'm pressing A to guard and it's just changing to something else. And the same with the other side as well. Do tasks. Do I have a task now? Found two food rations. Hey you, you scavenging there. Hmm, I'm not the only one left. I'm Dozer, I'm coming with you. It'll be easier to survive together. The next day has come probably. Okay, I think I just found someone else but they're not showing up on this. Oh, they are, there he is. So, I don't know what this is doing. Search, guard, no tasks are assigned, proceed. Something attacked during the night. The next day has come probably. Are these supplies gonna be enough? No, we need to keep searching. Okay, but I'm kind of feeling I'm not great at that. Great time to learn. Okay, this one's a bit weird. So there's a tick now on the warehouse. I guess that's because I found someone there. Let's try going to the hospital. And what does boost do? Let's see. Own attack boosted. Dakota is down. Shoot. Oh no, so I died and now it's up to the other guy that I just found. Dakota was revived. The area seems quiet. No food left. Okay, better find some food. No tasks are assigned. 
I don't know how I found the food last time. I think it was trying to do a task. No tasks are assigned. Guard, search, meds. Let's try heal. Okay, that helped. Although I need to find some food. The cafeteria will have some, surely. Let's see if I can kill these. Combo. Combo. Oh, I think she died again. I missed that. A group assault. A revive kept Dakota alive. Dozer died of his injuries. They're gone. How could I let this happen? I'm sorry. No food left. No tasks assigned. But it said it was a stopped cafeteria, so there should be food here. Heal. No usable items. Move. Full of snacks. But it says uses two food, but I haven't got any food, so I don't know if I'll actually be able to get there or not. After nine nights, dawn did not come. Main menu. Okay. And that's the end of that one. I can't pretend I actually understood what I was doing there. That was a bit of a weird one. So gameplay, I'm going to say two because it didn't really make any sense. It says here, reach dawn with everyone. Kill weak monsters. Kill more monsters outside. I don't know what this is. It's like some list of things that you need to do. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Technical, maybe three. It was pretty much just a slideshow. Originality? Maybe a 4. I've never really seen a survival horror kind of game on the Game Boy. Graphics? 3 maybe. And audio? I'm going to say audio is a 2 or a 3. I did have to turn it down, so maybe I'm going to give it a 2 actually. Yeah, nice arrow there, but I didn't really think much of that one. Let's try this next one here, called El Giulo Rosso. Jewel Rosso, let's go. And if any of you guys watching want to check any of these games out, you can do so over on itch.io. You can actually find them all there. Um, okay, so let's start the timer and let's see what this one's like. Reset the timer first and then start it. Okay, so we got arcade mode, practice mode, survival, high score, and credits. Let's go straight into arcade mode and let's start on normal. So we got six lives, so let's have a look how to play first. Defeat all the foes before the time is over or before you lose all of your health. Reload your gun when you're out of ammunition. Shoot the explosives before they go off. Use a D-pad to aim. A to shoot, B to reload. Sounds simple. Okay, so the D-pad actually... Um, I don't know how to shoot the explosives. You have to shoot them when they're on the floor. Okay, this is a very, very simple game. It's kind of got the hang of it now, so whenever you're not shooting something, just keep mashing B to reload. Yay, I did pretty well. Level complete. I quite like this. It feels like it should be a light gun game though, not something that uses a d-pad. Nice and simple pick up and play style game though. Let's see. Oh cool! Nice. So level 2 is a completely different style of game. I presume all I need to do is avoid these barrels. I'm pressing buttons but they're not doing anything. So I'm going to try and hit one. Yeah, so I'm not supposed to hit them because that does take my health down. Um, I don't seem to be getting any closer to him though. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong here. Maybe I should have read how to play. I didn't realise it would be a different gameplay style. Very simple graphics though. They, re they remind me kind of like NES or like uh, Windows 3.1 style. Oh, okay. So when I'm st when I'm stood still, that crosshair comes from the left there, and if you time it right. That's a unique way of, of controlling. So you have to hold down A and then let go at the right time to shoot the wagon. That's pretty cool. And then if you press left and right, then the uh, crosshair disappears. So you've got to be really quick with it. 
That's really clever, actually. Took a minute to understand what was going on there, but I like that. I might actually rate this one quite highly on the gameplay department. I didn't think I would. Versus Lenny Simpleton. I'm going to try how to play first. Win three rounds in the duel against your opponent. Shoot when indicated on the screen. You'll lose a round if your shot is early or if your opponent shoots before you did. Press A to shoot. So I guess you just got to wait for the timer and then... Wait. Cool, it's like a little WarioWare minigame. Oh, yeah, way ahead of him. 0.3. It's a good job I'm playing this on a CRT. Yeah, 0.3 again. Wow, I won that by miles. Level complete. I better get a good score for that one. That was really cool. Whoa. What is that? 30 million? No, 3 million. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Defeat the gang. Let's see. Defeat all the foes before the time is over or before you lose all your health. Reload when it's out of ammo. A to shoot. D-pad to reload. Okay, we're back to the saloon again. I know what I'm doing this time. And you have to remember to shoot the... Um... Ah! Ah, there's too many! Oh, that was close. Wow, this is a lot harder than last time. Shoot the dynamite before it explodes as well. Ah! It's pretty good how fast it is. Like you don't need to, um, you don't need to wait for the gun to reload. You can just mash B as fast as possible. Oh my god! Yeah, this is really fun. I really like this. Ah! God, my thumb's starting to cramp. Have I done it? Is that everyone? Yeah! I did it. I'm really enjoying this game. It makes a change from the RPG style games as well. This one's um, more of an arcadey experience, but it's definitely a good thing. And I know it's. I think it's starting to repeat now as well. Let's see if I can take this wagon out faster now I know what I'm doing. And there we go, timer is up. Really enjoyed that. If they add some extra game modes in the future, I feel like that could be a really good game. Gameplay, I'm going to give a 4. Technical, on a technical level it isn't great. On an originality level though, giving that one a 5, that is really fun. Graphics are very simple, so I'll give that a three. And audio is pretty good, I'll give that a four. So, kind of a mix, but definitely on the higher end of the spectrum. And for any of the developers that are watching, if I am being a bit harsh on these games, just know that I really do appreciate all the effort that everyone put into this, but I do have to rate these fairly as well. So don't be put off, you're all doing an incredible job and keep up the great work. And of course, if any of you release games in the future, please let me know. I would love to feature them on the channel, especially if you ever uh, release anything physically, because as I'm sure you guys all know, I love my physical homebrew games. Now, the next one is called fixmyheart.gb. Let's get the timer reset. Made with GB Studio. I think a lot of these will be. Sorry, just had a notification there. I'll put my phone on the side. So, three, two, one, go. Let's see what Fix My Heart's all about. Watch cutscenes? Yes, of course. Why would I skip the cutscenes? Damn, I ran out of my medicine. I'll... First of all, this is using the built in GB Studio music that I've heard so many times. So, I'm immediately going to mark it down for that. Sorry for whoever made this, but I'm just so sick of this song by now. I'll call Dr. Rufeji and ask for more. Hello, Doctor? It's over. What What do you mean? The drug. There isn't any more of it. You'll have to get the ore by yourself. So I have only two hours left? Yes, your me mechanical heart will only work for two hours without the ore. 
What should I do? Enter the mine and get some more. Bring it to me and I'll put it in your heart. Okay, thanks, Doctor. Click. Okay, this is not the kind of game I was expecting. Okay, I'll get that and leave it once. This is like a ZX Spectrum style platformer. Definitely not what I was expecting. Uh, am I dead? God, for how long have I been passed out? Okay, this is interesting. I cannot believe I have only a few seconds left. Oh, okay, so his heart's almost about to explode. So, first of all, although it feels nice, they haven't changed the default jump button from A to B, which is a real bugbear of mine with these GB Studio platformers. Why did I get reset then? Nothing happened. Did I run out of time to pick the next thing up? Okay. There's not really anything to worry about. There's no enemies or anything. I don't know what they're doing either. Are they restoring my timer? Yeah. So it's going back up to six whenever I pick up one of them blobs there. And whenever you go into a new screen as well, it goes back up to six. Ah! Uh, Oh, I've messed that up. Ah, no! It feels pretty good, though, for a Game Boy Studio platformer. It's, although I'm really failing here, it is quite responsive. Except it doesn't like me going right to the end of the platforms there. That's better. I like the fact that the um, checkpoints are quite close together. And it doesn't really take that long to restart. So that's definitely a plus. I like how you've only just got enough time to get to the next one as well. It does make for quite an exciting gameplay. Although there's not really any um, penalty for not managing to make it. But yeah. Pretty good. Hopefully there's some more variety in the stages when we get a bit further in. I've still got about two minutes left, a minute and a half maybe. I'm beginning to think that the whole game is just these caves and um, weird girder-like floor tiles. But it's nice though. They've done a good job uh, tweaking the Game Boy Studio engine. Ah! Oh. I wonder how far this game actually goes. I was expecting there to be different levels, but it's all just one big continuous uh, set of screens. Which is pretty cool. I might actually play this one a little bit over the time limit, see whether anything new pops up. Whoa, that was close. Nice jump there. And again, good platforming skills. Yeah, this definitely feels good for a platformer. I'm definitely going to give it... Even though I said I don't like it being B to jump, I have to say that the actual feel of the jumps is really good. I must be near the gemstone. I can feel my heart changing, charged by its power. Okay. Okay, so there's no timer on this section. Whoa, that is a huge stone. Touch the gemstone? Yes. After touching the gemstone, you feel its power running through your whole body. You won't die anymore, regardless of what you do. Right, the timer stopped, but I will continue this just to see what happens. You go back home. Years and decades pass and you still live. You cannot bear this any longer. Was that what you really wanted, to live forever? Is this a blessing or a curse? End one of six. You died 11 times. Oh, okay. That's the end. Very, very short, simple game. I can see it being good if they add more levels. Um, somehow there's 11 different endings. I don't really know. Oh, six different endings, did it say? So I don't really know how you would get them. But anyway, let's judge it. So from a gameplay point of view, definitely a strong four. Uh, technical, three, originality, three, graphics, 
three, audio two. I kind of feel like I'm being a bit harsh now when I kind of up these. I really want to see them continue to work on this. Ah, damn. Gameplay five. I can't rate it anymore for technical because it's very simple. Originality, three. I think that's the best I can do for that one. I'm sorry, but whoever made this, keep up the great work and I would love to play a full version of it when it's done. Now next is a game called GB Corp and I know I'm not going to do this one justice just by playing it on the GameCube, but I might come back to this one a bit later on actually. <coughs> <clears throat> okay so we begin the timer as you can see here i've already played this one a bit before basically what the idea of this game is that depending on what system you actually play the game on it actually shows up differently so you can see i've tried it on the super game boy i tried it on the original game boy the game boy pocket the Okay, so playing it on Game Boy Interface thinks that it is a Super Game Boy. Uh, I don't know why the shown is inactive though. Um, okay, so I can activate these by pressing A on them. I'm not sure why they're inactive. Maybe it's getting confused because now when I'm when I'm pressing new higher, it's uh, showing up as Game Boy Color instead of Super Game Boy. In fact, uh, let's see. I'll pause the timer. I'll go and find some other Game Boys and see what happens if I play it on there instead. So I'll be back in just a second. <coughs> Oh, this is going to be impossible to see. Hold on. Let me try and bring the light over. There you go. So you can see as I've loaded it up now on a Game Boy Pocket. Hopefully you can just about make that out. That the Game Boy Pocket one is, is now bouncing up and down. So I think... Oh, I have to sit like this so I can get in the screen. So I think what happens in this game is when you uncover these squares it's actually different depending on what square you're in so yeah, you can't really see very well but i just uncovered one that said super game boy and that one said game boy pocket and then because i'm on a game boy pocket that one's lit up straight away and as you can see that one was a game boy pocket one as well and then the money keeps building up so i'm going to try it in another console now we've got a few other game boys lying around here so Let's try it. See what it thinks of a Game Boy Advance. I don't know whether it will recognize a GBA or not, but let's have a look and see what happens. Actually, where's my modded one? Okay. Well, I managed to find a GBA. It's not the one I was looking for. This is actually my girlfriend's one, but as you can see, it's actually recognizing it as a Game Boy Pocket. No, a Game Boy Color. So if I go across to those GBC ones there, you can see they're all working away. Uh, let's try and add some more in here. I'm not really sure what the goal of the game is, though. I've kind of given up on the timer for this one. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the goal of the game is, but it's um, definitely an interesting concept. I don't know. what. Maybe the goal is just to fill up all the squares, because there's a lot of squares there. But anyway, that's the gist of the game. If you can call it a game. It's a very cool tech demo. So. Ah, actually, there was one more I wanted to try. See whether it, it understands what a Game Boy Light is. Or if it understands what to do with it. Okay, you might just about be able to make it out. 
maybe. It's showing up as a Game Boy Pocket. Yeah, there you go. You can just, just about see there. So there you go. That answers that question. The Game Boy Light, according to that game, is a Game Boy Pocket. Now, let's put this back in the GameCube and we can carry on with the rest of the entries. Let's power that back on. And while that's doing that, let's go through here. Originality, definitely a five. Definitely. Gameplay, maybe a three. There isn't really much. Technical, on a technical level, it's very clever how it can pick out the different systems. Although, it would be even cooler if it could detect what a GBA is and what a Game Boy Light is as well. I'll give it a four for that. Graphics, they're pretty nice, pretty cute. And it's got a pretty nice soundtrack as well, so... I'll give that a four as well. So really, really interesting entry there. Let me reset the timer. Now, GBC Spelunky is next. Just gonna wait for this to load back up properly. I think the capture card just cut out for a second. There we go, now it's loading. Let's get these headphones back on. Okay, I'm back, and let's get started with the next game, which is called GBC Spelunky. And I've never actually played the original Spelunky, although I've heard that it's a really, really good game. So it's definitely something that I would like to try in the future. So first of all, I have to say it is very smooth. Very smooth to play. 60 frames a second, which is amazing. I'm not really too sure what I need to do, though. I presume just get to the end of the stage. I also, I remember playing um, Spelunky on the NES, actually, or Spelunka, or something like that. I know that's the one that, that's not the one that people would really remember today, but I used to have it on one of those multi-cart things for the GBA. Oh, the timer is started. I wasn't sure whether I'd press the timer or not then. Um, I don't know whether this is a remix of a tune from the... Oh, he's stuck down there. don't think he should be there. I don't know whether this is a tune from the original game or not. It might be a remix. Not too sure. Let me know in the comments, anyone who's played Spelunky before. Let me know what you're actually supposed to do because I have no idea. Um, uh, oh, you can jump on him as well. That's cool. So I presume you have to go through this door here. No? I don't know what that means, those two flashing lines there. Am I missing something? I have to jump on his head. Let's see. Game over. Why is it game over? I'm not too sure what just happened there. Just got a game over out of nowhere. So, pressing, um, so pressing something just restarted me there, but pressing start and select doesn't really seem to do anything. Um, yeah, not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing. I presume in the full game there's like different weapons and stuff, so this might just be a tech demo. But, um, yeah, it doesn't seem like there's anything to aim for yet in this version of the game. Although it seems well made, I would definitely give them credit for programming it in such smooth 60 frames a second as well. That is really impressive. And you know what? I might actually download the Spelunky games that are on the Switch now after playing this. Just to see what the, the actual game is supposed to be like. I know there are some some newer games in the series as well, which people really like. But uh, yeah, I can't really seem to do anything. And then some writing just glitched there, so I'm not sure what that was all about. But I'll give it. Okay, so that. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. 
Can I stand on there? No. I thought they were spikes. Oh, uh, maybe they are. Game over. Somehow I got to level 3. It said level 3 at the top. Oh, they are spikes. It just took a while to respond. Or, or they're not spikes? Are they only spikes sometimes? They were, those ones didn't hurt me. Maybe there's something wrong with the collision detection. Okay, you can press down to get under platforms like that, which is pretty good. Okay. Uh, that time it, it killed me. I feel like there's still a lot of polish that needs to be done. Okay, we're down to 50 something seconds. I'm not sure why I can't go through any of the doors. They're all just showing these lines here. And then I would just randomly die. Oh, unless that's because the timer ran out. I wasn't really paying attention to the timer. But yeah, I feel like I'm missing something because I can't get through any of the doors. A lot of the treasure is inaccessible as well because it's next to spikes. And those enemies don't seem to die. And like that one up there, that's impossible to reach. Maybe this is some procedural generation going on and that's why the level design is so weird. But it seems like there's a lot you can't actually get to. There's no double jump or anything either, I did, did check. Uh, right, there's the time up for that one. Not really sure what to think of that. Audio, not great. Gameplay, it's smooth. Maybe that would be more technical. Gameplay, I'm giving a three because it feels like there's a lot missing. Originality, obviously, it's based on an existing game already. Graphics were pretty nice. Don't know why the main character's in black and white though and everything else is in color, so I'll give that a three maybe. It is quite simple, but it's impressive they managed to do it in 60 frames a second. That's why I've rated technicalities as a four, so. Okay, that's enough for that one. Now, the next game is called Glory Hunters. I'll just have a quick look over the other games that we've done so far. So, I think actually Core Machina and Dango Dash are the winners so far. Let's see whether Glory Hunters can match any of those. Almost at the end of page one now. And I've got another cup of tea. Gotta have tea. Reset that timer. Um, I just realised the timer's moved over a bit actually. Let me try and move that back. Back to there, that's better. Okay, some weird artifact going on on the side of the picture there with those green lines I feel like this was meant to be seen in black and white not in colour so anyway let's start the timer and let's see what Glory Hunters is all about let's start a new game there's currently save data within the game start a new game or progress yes I did already play this one let's start a new adventure and see what we think of it the music's very very loud I'll have to turn it down a bit a war between many gods took place on this land. Their descendants marched down to conquer the world and a war lasted for a millennia. Heroes rose up to fight and bathed in glory. Their names became legends and their feats always remembered. Eventually, all the gods decided to take a deep slumber so that races of the land could finally find peace. They merged together, becoming a single voice. Rise, hunter. Wake up one of, Wake up one of our vessels so we can stop the impending doom. Rise. Rise, Hunter. Okay, for some reason, the Hunter is just a random guy who was asleep on the floor. That's a, a strange introduction. Let's see what this guy here says. Oh ho! Hello, my young friend. Welcome to Glorianta, where everybody seeks glory. I'm afraid only the glorious can pay the toll. Let me explain. The gods shall award glory points, GPS, to anyone who achieves a glory feat. Those who seek these feats are called glory hunters. Try cutting that bush over there multiple times. The gods will bestow one of the land's currency, pay me with one glory coin and the path will be unblocked. Go and become glory hunter. 
which Posh is it talking about? Is it the ones on the other screen? You cut five bushes, you've got the bush cutter, you've got a glory point, you can check them by pressing select. Okay, one GP. Let's go and give it to that guy and see what he wants us to do. Oh ho, you did it! You have enough glory points to come through. Come through, young one. These are the other glory hunters. That one has a sword! Please, we need your help. My little sis got kidnapped by the hooded spooks. You can easily defeat them with that sword. Please, please follow me. Okay. Please, find her. You've got ten bushes. Got the gardener reward. Okay, so I guess I just gotta look around now to find that girl who's been kidnapped. Is that her? This door is a special curse. You'll need a hundred glory points to break it. Only the most glorious hunters can enter. Is it gone? Thank you very much. Would you take me to my sister? Okay, so I rescued her. Yay! Thanks again, you're quite the hero. Before any of this happened, we were headed to the Fair of Glory. Right now is open to everyone. The great leaders are in search of a new hunter and you might have what it takes to become one. They must be selecting someone already. Let's rush there and nominate you. The council rules in favour of Sir Harlig Zeke, the Harbringer, to become the new glory hunter. No, why isn't it me? Found a candidate, let him through. Give us your name, young one. Enough of this charade. <clears throat> Only the worthy, the glorious, shall present a name to the council. They have already appointed me as their champion. I challenge you, nameless knight. Press A to grab a sword. Do not grab. Press A to hit. I think that means... What's it trying to say? Grab the carrots, but not... Something else? I don't really get what was going on there. Don't grab the broccoli. Okay. I don't know what's going on with the speed, it's going all glitchy for some reason. Uh, I don't know how... I don't know what was going on there. Seems like some weird jousting minigame that didn't quite work. Um, not even close. I feel like I didn't do something right there. Anyway, that's the time I've done for that one. Interesting. Gameplay, mostly pretty simple, but some interesting ideas, and it was quite smooth. Especially for a Game Boy Studio game, to have real-time combat like that is pretty good. Technical 4, Originality 3, because it is just a, a basic action RPG, although it was a fairly unique concept. Graphics, hmm, probably one of the weaker ones that I've seen so far, I'll probably give that a 3. And audio, maybe a three as well. It is original compositions, but they are a little bit basic. So definitely a good game, but it needs a little bit of work to become something really special. But stick with it, because I did really enjoy that. Now the next one here is called Marla and the Elemental Rings. Let's see what that one's like.
Right, let's start the timer. So already from the title screen I can tell this is a really polished game. That is a really nice looking title screen. Let's see what the game's like. I like that font. That's a really nice font. My child, I know you're worried about the island, but hear my advice. In order to vanquish the evil that has taken control over the island, you must collect all three elemental rings. The first, the plant ring, is hidden deep in the forest. It's currently protected by one of the ring guardians. Sadly, they got corrupted by the evil force and you won't be able to retrieve the ring peacefully. You must prepare well for the fight. I won't be able to help you. My old body wouldn't allow me. Good luck, my child. Be strong. I love you. Marley, you have to come quickly. The village has been attacked. Everyone fled. You must go and find the ring. I have to go now. Checkpoint. Nice screen transition. A little bit jerky though. Compared to Zelda at least. But, you know, can't really complain too much. Is there anything to do in here? No. I think I remember playing this one and all the houses seemed completely empty so I'm not going to bother going through any of those and that will help with the timer a little bit because I remember this one had a really interesting combat system so it's a very earthbound style screen here choose a target and then I think you need to press A at the right time um, you can choose different types of attacks like water or I'm not really sure what pressing the buttons does actually. Let's try this plant attack. Up. You gain 3 XP. So yeah, nice little combat system screen. Very uh, simple though. Let's see what Meditate does. Okay, you have to do it in time of when, with when that thing's coming over there. So we gained 1 MP. <coughs> not sure what you can use MP on. Uh, heal him. Let's try that then. So it's kind of like a... Um, some sort of rhythm game system where you have to press the right. I presume these are just really basic attacks just to show off what the game's like. So yeah, really cool idea for a, for a battle system. Really like that. The music's a bit, a little bit all over the place. There's no real melody to it. But yeah, I like the battle system. Although, so there's no start menu. There's no way of telling how close you are to the next level. That's what I was trying to figure out just then. And maybe these fights do go on a little bit too long for uh, right at the start of the game. Or maybe I'm just a bit worried about the timer running out because I do have a lot to get through. So I didn't want to spend too long on each game. But hopefully this gives you a good idea of what they're all like anyway. Quite surprised I haven't leveled up yet. Let's try and just avoid these and just carry on a little bit further up to find out what happens next. Oh no, the treasure chest was a mimic. All my attacks seem really basic. Ah, I messed up badly on that one. B, A, up. There we go. So I presume for the enemy's attacks, if they attack with the same thing, then the button combination. Yeah, there we go, leveled up. Max HP, max MP, attack, defense, and speed. Ah, and then you get to upgrade a spell as well, that's cool. So I upgraded the fire spell. So I wonder now if it will have two button inputs. No, still just one. Although now it did three damage, that's better. Three XP. So I can basically take the enemies out in one go now. Of course, no RPG. Made in Game Boy Studio, anyway. I don't know whether this is made in Game Boy Studio, actually. And that's good, because I can't actually tell. And I think this is where I'm going to end this gameplay section here. I've only got 30 seconds left. But let's see if I can get through this. Probably not. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool as well. So if you mash the button, um, outside of when you're supposed to press something, it does actually count as an input as well. Oh no, I fainted them back to the start, but I've only got 10 seconds left anyway, so yeah, really interesting, very simple. Obviously, like I said, 
at the minute. There's nothing to do inside any of the houses or anything. But I can definitely see that this game has promise. Let me just show you, yeah, they're all just the same sort of empty shell of a house. So, how am I going to rate this one? Gameplay, I'll give a 4, because although it is a very simple RPG, I do really like the battle system. Technical, I'll give a 4 as well. Originality, it's a bit too soon to tell. I'll give it a 4. Graphics, could be a little bit more detailed. I do like them, but there's, it seems very static. Does that make sense? So graphics, I'll give a 3 and audio a... Hmm, audio a 3 or a 4? Let me go into the battle system again. Uh, 4 or 3? Maybe a 3, just because it's... Nah, I'll give the audio... I might give everything a 4, actually, because this is a very strong game. So I think that's going to put it in third place behind some other ones, which I think is fair. Okay. So, come on, whoever's making this, a little bit more polish in every area, and you've got a winner on your hands. Now, the next one is called Pork Like GB. <clears throat> yeah, really enjoyed that one. Definitely Earthbound vibes. Pork Like. I don't remember what this one was about. I feel like I need to rest my head back, my neck's aching a bit. Oh yeah, and this that I'm using in the GameCube to use the SNES controller for playing these GBA games. If you want to know more about what this adapter is here, um, I presume the video that I've done on that will already be out by now, but I am working on a video to explain how I'm recording all these games because I've come up with a really, really good system for it. So anyway, enough rambling, let's start the timer. Let's find out what pork like for the Game Boy is all about. There we go. Ah, it's this one. This is a really cool little dungeon crawler. Really, really small, simple graphics, but uh, a really cool... Oh, was I facing the wrong way then? Oh no. I done, I already messed up. Oh god. Oh god. Pretend none of that happened. Let's try again. I'm not sure what a grapple is. So, as you can see, this is a randomly generated dungeon crawler. Okay. Maybe grapple is something like that lets you grapple onto the walls rather than attack enemies. As you can see, you can take out the enemies by bumping into them. Kind of like that really traditional old PC style adventure game sort of thing. Really nice idea for a game on the Game Boy. You don't really find too many uh, games in this genre. Nice controls though, but uh, very basic graphics. Oh, I shouldn't have gone into that. Apparently that was a bomb. Although I did just pick up a spear, which might be useful. And there must be something that slows me down as well, because... Let's try spear. Stab. I don't know whether that hurt me as well. I can't really tell... Yeah, so that is just hurting the enemies, not me, if I bump into them. And opening that treasure chest gives you... Oh no, I died! Opening the treasure chest as well gives you different attacks. Or jump power, apparently. I presume that will let you jump over the enemies. I'm just going to turn it up a little bit so I can hear. Spin as well, that's a new one. Okay, so the plant ones, if you go too close to them, they can actually attack you. Whereas these blobs can't attack you, so you don't really need to worry about being attacked by them. Oh, maybe you do. Maybe it depends what order you're going... Uh, Ah, no, I shouldn't have walked next to that plant then. The next floor was right there. Let's try this grapple hook thing. Ah, that's cool. 
I presume you can use that to go past enemies as well if there's enemies blocking your path. Let's try. Oh no, it grappled me into the enemy. But you can... Okay, I've got some other stuff there. Bolt and spin. Let's see when I might need to use them. Uh, ranged attack, do one damage. Okay, so that's like a projectile. Hook. Pull an enemy one space towards you and stop them. Hit four spaces around you. Okay, so spin is basically attack in all directions. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't have walked so close to him. You can't walk in place to make the enemies move, which is a bit of a shame because some of these mystery dungeon style games, you can use that to your advantage. Let's use the spin here. Oh, no, it didn't work. Ah, that worked. I took them all out. Pretty cool game, although nothing really seems to change floor and floor. Uh, there doesn't really seem to be... Okay, one monster hold the key. I presume it's this one here. Ah, oh, no, I died. So a really basic game, but one that I can see having a lot of replay value. Although it'd be good if there was things extras such as like um, a shop or some vari variety in the different floors or maybe boss fights, although I don't know. There might be boss fights and I just haven't got to them yet. But some more stuff to find in the mazes would be good. But yeah, pretty cool. Definitely uh, an interesting kind of game for the Game Boy. You don't really see this style of dungeon crawler made for the system much. Well, I didn't really get very far there. But you get the idea. Randomly generated dungeons aren't really my thing, so I managed to play it for five minutes. So let's say gameplay for technical. From a technical point of view, I don't really know because it's pretty cool that it's been randomly generated and it works pretty well. Uh, give it a, a three, maybe? It is very basic, and obviously, graphics and gameplay wise, the Game Boy can do a lot more. So maybe three. Originality, three. Graphics. Uh, two, audio three. Maybe I'll put techni technical as a four, because it is it is really well made. Again, a lot of these developers are really really good. So, yeah, kind of mixed on that one. I think I want to say the graphics slowed it down a bit, but I can see that that was the style they were going for as well. But as that is one of the categories on the competition, I've got to go with it. So let's carry on to the next game, which is called Rebound. Okay, first of all, that is a banger of a tune. That is awesome. I know I'm going to give the audio for this one a 5 out of 5. I've, I remember quite enjoying this one, actually. This one is a, a basic sort of platformer. Uh, you get to choose the height of the bounce. You can hold down the A button or hold down the B button to go either higher or lower, depending on what the environment requires. I'm not too sure if picking up all the money is actually necessary to finish the stage, but I'll try and pick it all up. Why not? This one kind of reminds me of the SNES game Jelly Boy, and obviously the end of the stage. Oh, that is really nice, the way the stage clear comes in there. That's some nice animation. So yeah, this kind of reminds me of like SNES or like Amiga indie games. Amiga homebrew games, I guess you'd call them, from back in the day. Very simple, very nice big sprites, but sometimes the simple games are the best ones. It controls really well, it's got great music, graphics could do with a bit of work, they are very very simple. It is full colour though, so I'll give them credit for making a colour game, instead of just a black and white game. Although actually, surprisingly, quite a lot of these have been colour releases. Yeah, I'm really, I really do enjoy this. Ah, I didn't realise I didn't set the timer.
Whoops. I'll set this one to four minutes because I accidentally missed the beginning there. Okay, there's some enemies now as well. That's good. I like the fact that each stage is introducing a little bit extra. I know that's the way that game designers use you to slowly introduce different mechanics, which is good. It is one hit kill. I wonder if there's any sort of power ups that let you take extra hits or give you some sort of life bar. Let's see. Let me know what you think of these games in the comments. Let me know whether I'm being fair on them. I'm trying to be as fair as I can. Because I know for some of my reviews on the channel I'm a little bit harsh, but um, I'm doing it for the benefit of everyone, honestly. Like, if... I'm not really saying things to be mean, I'm saying things to actually help the developers get better. And hopefully you guys realise that as well. Oh, that's cool. No, it's going underground. Nice. <clears throat> I like the fact that each level has been slightly different, but still pretty much the same the same gameplay. So you kind of know what to expect, but there's always a nice little twist like that. I like the way the screen scrolled there as well. That's very smooth. I think technically this is really good. If they increased the graphics a bit, um, maybe added a little bit more to each stage to make it stand out a bit more. But yeah, overall, another really, really good game. I think the, the judges for this competition have definitely picked out the, the best... Well, obviously that was the whole idea, but... Uh, when I was playing through, there was definitely a really big range of... Um, just a big range of different levels of polish, I, I should say, with these games. I think polish-wise, this one sits somewhere in the middle. Like, it'd be nice if those flowers there were animated. That would just bring everything to life a bit more, because outside of the character and the enemies, it's very static. Like, it'd be nice if those coins spun round, just to give it a little bit of flavour. Okay, here's a new thing for this stage. Is uh, how things bounce underwater. There's even a fish. That's really cool. That's really cool, actually, the way that they've changed the physics to work underwater as well. Ah! That was a bit difficult to avoid there. I feel like I've gave this game a little bit longer than the other games, but I'm really enjoying it. I wonder how many levels they've put in. Ah, did I just find a shortcut? Ah, oh, there's a 1-up! Ah, so there are lives. I've got two lives. No, I've got three. Oh, it's not a shortcut. It just took me to get that extra life. That's cool, though. That's the first time I'd seen one of them, so... Uh, I like that. It'd be good if there was some sort of health meter, though. I think one hit is a little bit too harsh. Especially when there's multiple enemies on the screen. It'd be good if you had like a little heart counter in the corner or something. Maybe give you two or three hits, because sometimes you end up getting stuck like that. It's not really fair. Or maybe I'm just bad at the game. I don't know what the coins do. It'd be good if there was like a shop or something. Maybe you could buy some health upgrades from a shop at the end of each stage or at the end of each world. I don't know whether there's different worlds or not. But yeah, I could definitely see myself playing more of this if they end up releasing it as a full release in the future. Would definitely like to see that. Oh, that was close then. Let's see if I can get past this section. I know the timer's going off. I want to try and... I want to try and finish this level. That's always the sign of a good game if I'm supposed to stop playing and I want to keep playing. I must be near the end. When you come back out of the water, it really shows how much faster the game is. Yeah, so it just carries on like that. Really enjoyed that. So how am I going to rate this? Gameplay, give it a 4. Technical, 4. Originality, it is very simple, so I have to give it a 3 for originality. Graphics, 3, because like I said, it does all feel very static and a little bit basic compared to some of the other games. Audio, I'm giving a 5. This has to be some of the best music that I've heard so far. 
And the fact that I want to keep playing is definitely a good sign. But I need to stop. So we can move on to the other games. Maybe. This actually feels like the kind of game that I would make. Man, I can't stop playing this one. Why can't I stop playing? I really want to see them turn this into a full release. I really, really do. Whoever made this one, if you're watching, keep it up. I'm definitely going to be... I'll definitely buy um, a physical version if you end up releasing one. Okay, let's see if anything changed on this next level. I know I've gave this game like six minutes now. Oh, that's the end. That's the end of the demo. Well, there we go. I played it all the way to the end. Really, really enjoyed that. Definitely keep working on it. I'm going to give... Yeah, I'm going to give gameplay a five. Why not? Renegade Rush next. Let's get that one loaded up. Oh, and we're on to the last five. Reset the timer. Okay, Renegade Rush, let's go. Five minutes. Play, Garage, Settings, Info. Let's start with Info. Okay, so that's just a credits list. Sound effects, music, reset, save. You get to pick different cars, or you can, you can upgrade them. So, uh, what am I trying to do on this one? It's interesting to see a racing game. I haven't, I haven't seen a... Okay, I don't know where I got that. Wait, oh, where did I get that bullet from? I think you have to wait for it to power up. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's not fair. They shunted me off the road there. So you can press up to go faster, or down to slow down. I presume to try and avoid these other cars. I need to try and figure out. So there's a health bar at the bottom. You don't seem to be able to attack the cars with the rocket. That must be what that S is for at the bottom, so I'm not sure how you get that. Oh, that box came out of nowhere. So there's a second meter at the bottom there that just ends in S. There must be some way of filling that up. But I think these cars you just have to avoid. Ha! Huh. I'll watch them. I wonder if I can shunt them off the road, maybe. So yeah, charge up the... Oh, that was close. So you have to watch your speed so that you actually have time to react. I'm not really sure what the goal is, though, of this. Oh, how did I miss that? I thought I got him then. Oh, that was close. No. I'm quite enjoying this, even though it doesn't entirely have... I don't know, it doesn't really have much of a much structure to it. Does that make any sense? Like, I don't know if I'm near the end of the stage. I don't know whether this is like a boss or what I'm actually supposed to be doing. Am I escaping from people? Is there any story to this? I don't know. What's the money for? I presume, well, the money is for buying the other cars from the garage, but what what is the aim, basically, is what I'm trying to ask. So is what I'm trying to figure out. And when do I get hurt by these cars and when do they hurt me? That's something else I haven't quite figured out yet. Let's try and go a bit faster. Whoa! Nice, I took out both of them at once then. Dun, 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 dun. Very little, very basic plinky plonky music. Ah, damn. Okay, so the hearts are when I actually die by, like, being exploded or hitting the walls or something. Yeah, so that's going to restart me now. Let's go back to the menu, see whether I can buy another car. Oh, no. Not by a long shot. So there's two others. That one costs a thousand. That one costs two thousand. Although, I can upgrade... Did I upgrade? 
It said I could upgrade. Yeah, I must have upgraded something. I'm not sure what that upgrade did. Maybe that is where you get the S at the bottom. Let's see. Or maybe I'm just going a bit faster than before. I like the speed of this. And once again, it's great to see a game running at 60 frames a second. I'm really impressed by the programming skills on show here. And it really makes me want to make my own game as well, because I know I can do it. I would just have to dedicate the time to it, and time is something that I'm severely lacking at the minute. I'm surprised I've managed to find time to record all this in one sitting. Don't know where the helicopter's gone. I've got a minute left. Oh, 40 seconds. Let's see if I can actually finish this level. Ah, no! If there is a finish to the level, that is. Seems to be more cars trying to stop me. There's a helicopter. I think I actually saved myself by hitting that car then. Ah! That came out of nowhere! Ah, oh, damn it. Yes, got him. I must be near the end. Okay, time has run out, but I'm going to keep doing this lap. I've only got one more heart left. So let's see whether I can actually finish this stage. I must be near the end. I'm on the third type of wall now. It must be getting close. Or maybe it is just ongoing and it's going to change back to the other style of background after this. The more I'm playing this, the more I'm enjoying it. I thought it was a bit too simple at first, but the uh, the way you have to fight the other cars is really fun. Damn, I died. So, gameplay, I'm going to give a 4. Technical, 3. Originality, Hmm, 4. Quite like it. Graphics, I'll have to give a 2. They are very basic. Audio, 3. Let's go with that. Good game, though. Now, Shock Lobster. I don't really remember this one. Let's see what this one was all about. In fact, I'll be back in just a second. Can pop to the toilet. Okay, I'm back. And the next one is called Shock Lobster. And there's only four left now. Let's reset the timer. Oh, I remember the music in this one. I think I left this one on in the background for some reason at one point. Because this was going around in my head afterwards. So, let's start the timer. I remember this one being a really interesting game. Um, oh man, I don't remember how to play though. So you've got a selection of different skills here. Uh, and you can buy new ones and different items there to increase the game's speed and stuff. So oh. No, I don't remember playing this one actually. This music, I'm realising, is... Uh... Oh my god, what am I doing? So you can choose, so if you look at the bottom right there, you can choose two different, um, yeah, the music is just the default Game Boy Studio music. This one's definitely used in um, Quest Arrest, or at least some version of this song is. I think they're all, like, default, yeah, this is definitely in Quest Arrest. It's all default music that you can download online that uses the, uh, the, is it Milky Tracker? The thing that you can use to program Game Boy music. And yeah, this music definitely doesn't fit with this game. We've got a high score though. Um, let's see, can I buy something new? Electrify. Okay, maybe it's not programmed properly yet because it's showing that I've got... You can turn them ones on and off, but I can't seem to do anything with those ones. And that's just... I don't, th I don't think everything's programmed properly yet. You're just fighting this snail. Um, I don't know how I'm going to play this for another three minutes because there's not really anything else I can do.
There doesn't seem to be anything else I could do anyway. I feel like if they're going to just copy music that's already freely available online, you may as well just not have included any background music. It's a very interesting idea though. It's just a shame that, that I couldn't actually unlock anything. Select. Okay, so you can read about what the different attacks do. That's a pretty nice idea. And the way it's laid out is really nice. Like, they've definitely put a lot of effort into the UI. It's a bit of a shame about the music. And it's a shame... Oh, maybe that high score thing isn't actually what you use to unlock things. It's actually the number at the top. See where it says 70. I'm not sure how to get that higher, though. I'm not sure where that... Uh where that number came from. Ah, and A and B are actually two separate attacks that you can do. Wow, that one did a lot more damage. Okay, I'm starting to get the hang of it a bit more now, so if you hold up and press A, that's going to do the jump. If you press B on its own. I'm not sure why it's firing as well as jumping though, because A looks like it's just jump. B is that huge attack. Oh, I thought they were bubbles, but they're actually the coins that you're picking up. It's starting to make sense now. Yeah, see in the background where I'm picking up those circles? That's actually the stuff that you can pick up to power up. Yeah, I managed to kill it. And now instead of a snail, we've got a squid. Actually, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Very, very unique. I don't know how long it would hold my attention for though, uh, but yeah, never really played anything like this before. I might go a little bit over the time limit actually, see whether I can unlock something else and see how that works. Okay, I've got this, electrify. So, sticky d-pad music. Oh, you can actually disable the music, but yeah, I can't really... I'm not sure I'm not sure how to turn things on or off. I'm not sure why that says one, two, three. Oh, game speed. Okay. Well, let's try. Now I've got something on the third bit on the left as well. And that is all the time we've got for that game. I'm instantly gonna put audio as a two because I don't really want to mark the whole game down for that. Originality, I'm giving a 5. Technical, 4. Gameplay, 4. I think that's fair. Graphics, 3. It's nice and smooth, but it is very, very simple. And yeah, I can't get over using that built-in music, unfortunately. Which is only a problem because I've played so many games from Game Boy Studio that whenever I hear that now, it's just an instant turn-off for me. Uh, where are we up to? Sushi Nights. Let's see what this one's like. This one's made in ZGB. That's an interesting choice. Oh, yes, I remember this one. This one's the grapple game. Really cool. They did, a, they did a really good job with how smooth it is, too. Oh, although when you let go is a bit weird. Good job. So yeah, really, really interesting platforming mechanic for this one. It might take a little bit of time to get used to. So you can press up and down to move up and down the uh, the grapple hook. But you can't really jump off it, which is a bit weird. You just sort of sink back down. Which is a bit weird, because you would expect the momentum to carry you up, but it doesn't really. Right, when I'm jumping, you press the A button to jump, and 
It's actually easier just to jump like that. Maybe that's the idea. It's like a platformer. <coughs> oh, run out of time. Maybe you're supposed to treat it more like a platformer until you need to use the grapple hook like there. And then use it to swing across the gaps. That makes more sense. Oh, I didn't get what he was after. So you have to go and... Do you have to find the sushi? Am I missing something? I think I'm missing it. There it is. Let's try that again. I'm going to run out of time, am I? Yeah, so don't rely on the grapple for doing all of the platforming, I think is what I've learned. Just use it to get across some of the gaps. They're a bit too difficult to reach. Ah, oh, I've only got two seconds left. I'm not going to make it. At least I know what to do now. Yeah, I'm getting the hang of it now. Really cool idea. I just wish that the grapple made a bit more of a an impact to the platforming. Like, I'd like to be able to swing and then fly off rather than just drop straight back down like that. But it's definitely good. It's definitely well programmed. So there's two in this one. Although, looks like you can still only give them to them one at a time. There we go. I don't know why the people have antlers. Am I missing something there? Are they supposed to be deer? Am I supposed to be a sheep or something? I'm not sure. But yeah, there we go. Good job. Really cool game, I'm really enjoying this. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And of course, don't forget to check these games out as well if you want to play them for yourselves. I feel like the movement speed's maybe a little slow. Oh, where am I supposed to take the other one? I don't know where the other person is. Are they down here? I don't know whether that's... Yeah, they could maybe signpost the pits of death because I couldn't really tell whether I was going to carry on down there or not. Maybe have some sort of signpost. There's three in this level. Okay. Oh, have I fallen out the stage? I think I broke it. I think I've broken it. Where am I? Oh no. I've jumped out the level. Uh, I've disappeared. Let's just end that one a bit early. Because I can't get back onto the level. So, Sushi Knights gameplay. I'll give that four. Technical. Technical a three because there are some things that could be improved. Originality. Graphics, unfortunately, weren't great. Music's really good though. Yeah, I think I think that's I think that's fair. I feel like the graphics could do with some work. Apart from that, it was fun. Enjoyed that one. Now on Earth, there's the next one. There's only two left now. Nearly at the end, unfortunately. I was really enjoying this. Let's see. Final round. On Earth zero. Don't know why it says zero. Oh, reset the timer. I've got to remember to sit back because my neck's aching a bit. Oh yes, I remember this one. This was an interesting one. So, timer begins. This one, I think is... I've actually already finished level one, but let's do level one again. I'm going to try and remember what to do. So, oh man, what do you have to do? Fall. I think I forgot some of the ore. I've still got some stuff to pick up. Ah, that's right. Kind of reminded me of Mole Mania. Okay. 
resources, retrieve them all to exit. Full. Three. Okay, so you've got to recharge your fuel. And then when you pick up the ore, that's when you can finish the stage. And it counts you on how many moves you've made. So definitely a really, really interesting concept. It took a little bit of time for me to get my head around. Um, so... And you can't dig on that floor, so you have to dig next to it. Not sure what that did. Wait, what is this? I'm sure it's nothing. Let's only pick things up if they're DSMR approved. Hmm. Well, I picked it up anyway. So you can see what the I the idea is. I presume what I picked up. Of course. Every game in the world lets you push blocks around. And that counter in the corner, that is how many... Um, Ah, uh, so the counter is how many moves you're allowed, so now I've got four more chances to dig under the ground. So you can use it like that to go up and down. There we go. I like the fact that this is really puzzle based, so... Hey, did I actually do that above par? That's pretty good. I have no idea how I managed to do that. Yeah, I like the idea that it's actually on a grid, so it counts how many moves you've done. It does make you think a lot as well. Like, so there is no point going down there. I need to go in where that one is. So I need to push that one out of the way. Dig here. Pick up the ore. And then go back above ground. Ah, I get it. Go above ground over here and then push those blocks out of the way. Like that. Yeah, really clever game. Really like this. I don't really have much to say about what could be improved in this one either. Uh, it seems very polished. I might play a little bit longer than the timer just to see what the levels are like after this first world as well, because it looks like uh, looks like there was three more stages here. And then it was going to go across to a different type of area or something. I don't know where the ore is in this one though. I haven't seen that yet. Oh, it's right there. There we go. Easy. Let's refuel. So yeah, I'm sure you're picking up the idea for this game now. Really unique concept. Well, kind of unique, but at the same time it's very much like how uh, Mole Mania plays. Which... If you don't know, it's a really cool puzzle game for the original Game Boy. Except this one's obviously very much more sci-fi style. And there's two more. Let's see, I've got one minute. Can I make it through these next two levels? Oh no, you're already out of fuel. And the gas pump is empty. Oh wait, there's gas cans. It's too volatile to push with the mech. Not sure what I'm supposed to do there. It's too volatile to push with a mech. Empty. Oh, okay. I didn't realise that. You can actually get out of the mech as well and push them like that. And then you can jump back in. That's cool. Uh, damn, this station needs fuel. Uh, have I gone wrong? self-destruct. I presume that begins the level from scratch. I know what I need to do now. And what I need to do is push this one out of the way. This is clever. I'm going to carry on playing this one a bit longer. And then go back. Push that up to the fuel thing. That fuels up the thing for the robot to power itself. Get back in the robot. Go back to being in full fuel. And then... Ah, oh, okay. You even have to do it here as well. Interesting. Push that to the side. Get out. 
push that to the side, get back in, push that up, grab that. Damn. Have I blocked the exit now? I think I have. Let's see if it resets when I go back down. I also might have to do that one again. Ah, uh, no. Yeah, I've, I've blocked the exit, damn it. Okay, I am going to keep playing just because I wanted to see whether that was the end of the demo or whether there's more to it. But yeah, as you can tell, I'm going to rate this one quite highly. Got it, so I need to push that one down and then grab it and then climb up here. Yay, there we go. Level complete. And there's... I'm not sure how you get the stars there, I just noticed. Um... Okay, now you can also... I'm out of fuel again. Oh no! Oh, okay. That sends you underground. Cool. So, push something. I get it. Push that rock down the hole there. And then I'll be able to go across. Oh. I really thought there was going to be a hole there that I could push it into. Maybe I can fill this hole or something. Can I move these boxes? No. Not sure what to do there. Let's try this one again. Okay, I don't know why there's a timer that counts down if you're self destructing as the robot. Oh, I get it. I have to push it down that hole. Okay, now I understand. And then if I go down that way, I don't even waste any fuel. Easy. And... There's a thing to finish the level, but there's also another one of these crystals. Although I don't know what they do. But there we go, level complete. As you can see, really, really interesting game. And uh, did I get the star because I got the crystal? Maybe. No, I didn't get a star, but I got a crystal on it. No, I did get the star. I just didn't get the star on that one. Anyway, let's see. Max, you have a message. I recognize the icon. Okay. Okay, no, it's just it's just more of the same with some new gimmicks. So for this one, unearthed gameplay five. I feel like this was the cleverest one out of the bunch. I'll give that one a five. Technical, originality, graphics, audio. How do I rate the other ones? Because I want that one to be really high on the list. Maybe I'll give t uh, Originality a 5, because I really enjoy how this one was put together. Yeah. I think that's fair. Again, with the graphics, I really like them, except everything's very static. 
and the fact that it just jumps from one square to the other means there isn't really much animation as well. It'd be nice if there was some more animation to go along with things. Um, maybe a nice little in-between cutscene when he's going underground as well, showing the drill spinning around or something, that'd be cool. Overall though, really, really good. Definitely one of my favourites. And the final game now, can't believe we're on to the final one. It's called, it's called Rhythm Land. So let's see what Rhythm Land's like. Again, great music. Let's go, five minutes. Off to a good start. So there's a few different games here. Sorry there wasn't enough to, time to finish this game before the compo deadline. So there's four games and then there's one with no signal. So Skater Dude, show off your gnarly skateboarding tricks on the road by jumping in time. In time. Whoa, nice parallel scrolling. Okay, cool music. So the only thing you can do in this, left and right, do nothing. Okay, so you, it doesn't really matter if you mess up the timing. Dun, 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 dun. Am I being too slow? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I'm being too slow. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, maybe that's just right. Maybe it's just going too fast. Cool little Rhythm Paradise style minigame. I like the way the houses are bouncing in the background. It'd be good if there was some sort of score or something, or... Hey, that dude knows his stuff. Those tricks were really cool. Great. Again, more amazing music. I can tell this guy's a chiptune composer. Let's see what the next one is. Pancake. Flip a pancake in time with music. Oh, too soon. I don't know when you're supposed to do it. I don't know whether I'm doing any good on that. I feel like it needs to... I feel like it needs to give you some sort of idea of... whether you're actually doing it right or not, because I have no idea. That one's a bit burnt. Is that the perfect pancake when both the middle bits are circular? Why didn't that one flip over? I think that's the best. That one's too burnt. Maybe? I don't know. It'd be good if there was some few that tasted really awful don't quit your day job and take up cooking bad oh dear i feel like it needs to give you a bit of a hint as to whether you're doing any good or not fire away incoming enemy speedboats don't let them get away okay so if you press left it shoots to the left and if you press a it shoots to the right I wonder if there's anything to stop you just doing that. Ha! Huh. No, there isn't. There needs to be a scoring system, more than just telling you whether you did good or bad at the end of the stage. But in terms of the music, this is brilliant. In terms of gameplay, they could do more to turn it into a game, but as a proof of concept, it's definitely got potential. I do love my music rhythm games. And if there was a full game with some proper scoring systems based on this soundtrack, I would definitely be up for playing the full thing. That didn't really time up with the music then.
Cool. What a waste of ammunition. I doubt you could hit the broad side of a barn. Oh, ouch. Is that because I was just randomly firing to see if anything would happen? And the last one is called Seagull Serenade. Squawk to the music while staying in tune with your Seagull Trio. Okay. Nothing's happening yet. Are they going to spawn? Oh! Am I pressing the wrong button? I'm pressing the wrong button. Uh, okay, so... Pressing... Left, right, up, down, changes the pitch. Oh dear. Oh, I'm doing badly with this one. There needs to be something on the screen to tell you what, which one's higher or lower. Blah, 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 blah. I give up. <laughs> Interesting concept though. Gameplay, I feel like it definitely needs some improvement. Technical, yeah, everything's pretty good. Original, yeah, good. Graphics, could do with some improvement. Would like to see it in colour as well, because when you're playing it through this, you can obviously tell which bits are sprites and which bits are the background. Audio, definitely giving that one a five. And there we go. That is all 17 games rated. Hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you thought of my uh, picks there. Let me know what you thought of my ratings for each game. Really, really enjoyed it. If I had to pick some of my favourites, it would be the first two here. Definitely Core Machina. Uh, definitely Dango Dash. Um, let's see, which other ones did I really like? Marla in the Ele Elemental Rings. Very, very solid entry. Rebound. That was probably my favourite one to play. Shock Lobster was interesting. Unearthed was really, really good. And that's the end of that. Unearthed probably deserves to win, I'd say. But I'll be really interested to see what other people have picked as well. So there we go. I'm submitting my form. There we go. My uh, entries have been recorded. Thank you all so much for watching. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, thank you so, so much. Please consider checking out Patreon. Give the video a thumbs up, like it, and I'll see you for regular videos over on Retro Break. And of course, stay tuned to this gameplay channel for loads of other gameplay coming soon. And I'll be moving into a new house soon, and I'm hoping to do some live streams as well. So if you enjoyed this all the way to the end, go and check out Twitch and follow on there because one day I'll start using it. I don't know when it is yet though. So anyway, that's it for now. Goodbye.